What's up guys? My name is Not Explosive, and today I'd like to bring you guys a Paradox Brothers farm deck that I've made. I think it's pretty cool. So let's take a look at it. I've got my phone here in front of me so you can see what's going on through its recording. So I use Taya and Holy Guard, obviously. Uh, and I use the Unhappy Girl method. So let's take a look at it. I've got the Unhappy Girl, obviously. Rhyme May, and I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but I use Rhyme May to find the unhappy girl. And I don't have Union Attack, so I use Piranha Army instead of Gravekeeper's Vassal. And in this deck, it's made to both Ritual Summon and Fusion Summon. So the Ritual Engine is here. It's the Magician of Black Chaos, and where's the Ritual? There it is. It's the Black Magic Ritual. So the Fusion is the Summoner of Illusions. And can I get it? Yeah, there it is. It's Meteor B Dragon. So the goal is to take either or uh, pop it onto Piranha Army and before popping it on using Secret Pass to the Treasures to give Piranha the ability to attack directly, then with the attack boost attack directly for over 10,000 damage. This gives you points because not only are you doing a ritual summon, you're also doing a fusion summon, and uh, for me, this card is glossy, and my enemy controller is prismatic, so that gives extra points, and it's just it's just a good time. So with that, let's get to farming. Labyrinth of no return, well, we'll see, we'll see. These guys are nice because they don't have any of the problems as with the earlier duelist, such as with Joey, with monster removal, position changing, it was annoying, and so we don't have that problem here now. Let's go, let's go. And it might just be me, but I think that the Labyrinth tank is actually much harder to deal with than the Labyrinth wall. Come on, it's the first time I've actually ever seen him or anyone bring this monster out, so that's that's actually pretty neat. So now, super simple, we bring out the unhappy girl and we start spinning the monster. Now, what, what else is interesting is that you can use this card, the Magician of Black Chaos, to also keep him in check because he doesn't have any attack boost, he also doesn't have does not have any uh removal so he just can't get over it meaning that that one card just holds him in place something that sometimes catches me and this is super important for those of you who don't ritual summon often is when you're ritual summoning be very careful of what you choose to forfeit for the ritual summon because there have been a couple of times where i have forfeited um my piranha army and that's turned out great so yeah be very careful of that also keep a note of uh summoner of illusions here just a moment come on hurry up yeah 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 all right be careful of summoner of illusions because the monster goes away at the end phase meaning that you probably shouldn't tribute the magician of black chaos because then both your big guys will go away and you'll have nothing to boost the attack points with. So be very, very careful with that card. So now we're gonna set this. This is this is just a precautionary card. You don't really need it, but just in case some sort of shenanigans happen, it's always nice to have a little bit of backup. All right. We're just waiting on another four star monster here. And I really like this event, the Paradox Brothers event. First of all, because we can earn keys and fight them at our own pace instead of waiting, for example, for Yugi or Joey to show up, which was actually a little bit, a lot, a lot bit annoying. And uh, another good thing is that, well, we get these guys as duelists now. So not only do we get their gems from the event, we also get the gems from grinding. 
all right place that down just keeping him in here just just keeping him in check super important so that he doesn't do any life point damage because if he does life point damage then uh, that's less points for you and you want as many many points as possible all right now I have had zero problems with this deck when I draw Unhappy Girl or something else like Raime, but uh, this deck does not work when you get stuck with nothing, so that's very, very important to be careful of. That's why I've included Magic Mallet in order to um, pop the cards you don't need back into the deck to try and pick up a card that you do need. And uh, I've got one Magic Mallet in the deck, but that's not to say that you can't run more. I don't suggest three. Three seems like a little bit overkill, but definitely two is two is the way to go. I like one because, well, I need other cards, and I'm running a little bit of a normal draw, normal monster draw engine using um, Heart of the Underdog. But other than that, if you think that you can get away with two Magic Mallets, by all means. And see, now you're finding out why Magic Mallet and Heart of the Underdog is important. Because he'll just go through all his cards. Like that. So now he's got six cards to my tent. So it's super duper important that we get Heart of the Underdog soon. So that we can potentially get what we need. So I'm just going to try and thin the deck a little bit. I can't remember how many. Yep. Perfect. I'll take that to my hand. Shuffle it up. And, and. So as you can see, Unhappy Girl isn't pinning anything anymore, but he can't do anything because the attack of his monsters just isn't high enough. Let's see, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. That's Labyrinth Wall most likely. Fishies are here. Oh, I like the fishies. Something that I thought was particularly interesting with the character was that he's got a skill called Labyrinth Builder, which is, allows you to put out a Labyrinth Wall for his turn for the price of two cards, I think. Don't, don't quote me on that, but I think that's what it is. So, uh, what's interesting about that is it could have been called Wall Builder, but I'm pretty sure that both you and I know why it's not called Wall Builder, so that's that's just something I thought was pretty neat. A little bit funny. All right, come on. All right, so we're gonna. What do we not need? We don't need this anymore. So, yeah, we've got we've got a fishy. We've got secret pass. Those two cards are starting to give me a bit of a bit of a worry, but that's that's not a problem. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. There we go. Enemy controller. Alright, we will set that. In the turn. So what I plan to do next is most likely I will set this. I will probably tribute this to bring out the Meteor Bee Dragon. I mean, I don't know yet, but that's what I'll probably do because that seems like the good move to make. Depends on the draw here. Gift of the Martyr. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what I'll, because he's running out of cards and I can't seem to draw the card, um, card of the underdog. And we only have one in the game so far. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Otherwise I would run more, but the play to make the play that I think needs to be made is we're going to set this like that and we are going to end our turn here. Now he's going to attack and fortunately we have Windstorm. So come on. There's the attack. There's the Windstorm. Doing a bit of a flippy dip. Alrighty. Uh, now we throw this down. See, that's why you, that's why you need an enemy controller in here. It also helps that it's prismatic, 
Now the reason my enemy controller is prismatic is because I picked it up at the Kyber Corp cup thing uh, a while ago and I actually kind of want that back but anyway so magic mallet we're just gonna pop that real quick we are going to move the normal monsters back into the deck to see if we're missing anything just in case just in case because although it looks like I have all the pieces yeah okay so what we're going to do is we're going to normal summon this. Now unfortunately the enemy controller was taken from me. So that's that's a little bit annoying. But I do have all my pieces. So we're going to flip. The enemy controller also works as a backup if you can't get one of your uh, monsters out. So you can just instead tribute one of your monsters to steal one of theirs. And then uh, raise your own attack points using that. So I was a little bit annoyed by that, but it doesn't seem to matter. So now we're going to take the secret pass to the treasure. Super duper simple. We're just going to stick that on our fishies there. Now we can attack directly. Next we're going to use Ryoku, Ryoku, however you pronounce it. doesn't really matter. Uh, we are going to have this attack and get us some more fishies. And then Gift of the Martyr. To the graveyard, give this some attack, then we're gonna battle here. As you can see, super important that you don't accidentally attack with this thing. And see, he has nothing to defend against it, so it's it's really easy how to uh, just knock him out. Super duper easy farm. Now we're gonna see what we got. Alrighty, moving up to those 100 gems. What did we get? Oh, look at that. Oh my god. Oh yes. Oh yes. This isn't a bad card because uh, what it reads is when you take battle damage, target one monster in your graveyard with attack less than or equal to the amount of damage you took and special summon that target. It's great for coming back. It's not great as is, but it's great for coming back to the game. So. Uh, with that, that's that's the end of the video. That was, I'd say that was a pretty good farm. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, comment your thoughts down below, and thanks very much for watching.